Hi, I'm Vance, and welcome to Repair and Replace. The defrost timer is a critical part of the defrost system. If the timer is faulty, then ice will build up and the refrigerator will not cool properly. In this episode, first we'll learn how it all works. Then we'll test the defrost timer with a multimeter. Finally, we'll see how to install a new one. This applies to most top freezer refrigerators, as well as some side-by-side -side and bottom freezer models. All refrigerators work in the same basic way. When cooling is needed, the cold control sends power to the cooling circuit. The compressor pushes the refrigerant through the system. In the freezer, heat is extracted by the evaporator coils and is released through the condenser coils behind the refrigerator. This process continues until the set temperature is reached. Each time the door is opened, humid air enters the fridge. This moisture condenses and freezes around the evaporator coils. If left unchecked, a buildup of ice will prevent the refrigerator from cooling properly. Modern refrigerators have a defrost system. This includes a defrost timer or controller, a heating element, and a thermostat or thermistor. When the cycle begins, the defrost control shuts off power to the compressor and the fans. This prevents the refrigerator from cooling while the heater is active. Next, power is sent to the heating element, which melts the ice on the coils. The water flows into the drain pan under the fridge and evaporates over time. The heating element continues to heat until the defrost thermostat warms up and disconnects power. Once the time is up, power switches back to the cooling circuit. If the defrost timer is stuck in the cooling mode, then the defrost cycle will not run and ice will build up. Alternatively, if the defrost timer fails completely, then it can also prevent the compressor from starting. Using a multimeter, components can be tested for continuity. A continuity test will determine if there is a continuous path for electricity to flow through. Without continuity, the component will not work and will need to be replaced. To begin, you might need a screwdriver or nut driver and a multimeter. You might also need a towel and a heat gun. Keep in mind there is some variation between models and not all refrigerators will have the same parts. You can enter your model number on the Amory Supply website to see a parts breakdown. This can be helpful to show you which parts are in your refrigerator and where they are located. It's worth trying to start the defrost cycle manually. Top freezer refrigerators usually have a defrost timer located in the control module. You can use a flat blade screwdriver to turn the screw clockwise until it clicks. The defrost cycle should begin. If the heater warms up, then you've verified that the heating element is good. In this case, the defrost timer is likely faulty and should be replaced. Now to switch out of the defrost mode and reset the timer, turn the screw clockwise until it clicks again. First, slide the refrigerator out from the wall. When there is enough room, unplug the cord to disconnect the power. In this case, you can work on the refrigerator in place with it still against the wall.
To access the defrost timer, you'll have to find the control module, which is normally at the top of the refrigerator. Remove the screws and lower the control housing. It might be held in by plastic tabs, so don't force it or it might break. In some cases, you can disconnect the wires and remove the entire housing. In some models, the defrost timer might also be located behind the kick plate or next to the compressor. The defrost timer switches power between the cooling and defrost circuits. On top of the timer is a motor that spins the cam. One full cycle takes about eight hours of runtime to complete. There are four numbered terminals. Terminal one is the common terminal. Terminal three is for the timer motor. Terminal four is for the cooling circuit, which is powered any time the cold control is active. Terminal two is for the defrost circuit. Once the timer starts the defrost cycle, it will run for about 30 minutes or until the frost is melted. Then power switches back to the cooling circuit. First, remove the defrost timer. This might be held in by tabs or by a mounting screw. Now remove the wire connector. Set your multimeter to the continuity or resistance setting. To test the defrost mode, check terminals 1 and 2. Depending on where the cam is set, you should have no reading and no continuity. Now turn the advancement screw clockwise. You should hear a click when it switches to the defrost mode. When it clicks, there should be continuity. This will verify that the defrost circuit can be energized. Turn the screw until it clicks again. This will disconnect the terminals and there should be no continuity. To test the cooling mode, check terminals 1 and 4. The cooling circuit will be energized for the majority of the time, so you should get a continuity reading. Turn the advancement screw until it clicks. This should disconnect the circuit, so there will be no continuity. Now if the defrost timer fails any of these tests, then it's faulty and should be replaced. Keep in mind, testing terminals 1 and 3 might not show you a normal reading as the motor uses a small capacitor. This means in most cases you can't check the motor. If you think that the motor has failed, then replace the defrost timer. First, reconnect the wires. Place the new defrost timer into the control housing. Next, replace any screws. Align the control housing and reconnect the wire harness. Now tighten the mounting screws. Plug in the cord to reconnect the power. Now slide it back into place. Make sure to leave a couple of inches of space between the refrigerator and the wall. This will allow for proper airflow. Now test the refrigerator to see if it's working properly. Now if the defrost system still isn't working, then it could be an issue with another component. You can see how to troubleshoot this in the video linked below. If you like this and want to see more tutorials and informational videos, then subscribe to our channel. And if you need help, you can call or visit an Amory location 
to talk with our knowledgeable staff. Thanks for watching.